Greetings comrades, uh, the 23rd of October saw Tunisians going out to vote for the first time in the Constituent Assembly, the first truly democratic election since the ousting of Tunisian President Ben Ali in uh, 2011, and the first bourgeois democratic election to come about since the beginning of the Tunisian Revolution, uh, which is the spark which lit the prairie fire of the Arab Spring. The suicide by self-immolation of Mohamed Bouazizi on the 17th of December 2010 was the catalyst for a pro-democracy movement in the nation which eventually crossed all the class borders and was in response to the many failings of the Ben Ali administration which included human rights abuses, high unemployment, high living costs and of course a lack of democracy. After about a less than a month Ben Ali was forced into exile with the help of the nation's military um, who came over to the side of the protesters and uh, on the 14th of January fled to Saudi Arabia on the condition that he would stay out of uh, Arab politics forever. Um, notably the now deposed Libyan government actually played a part in the flight of Ben Ali helping him to get to Malta on the way to Jeddah in um, Saudi Arabia. <coughs> the military then took control of the government under the auspices of protecting the revolution for three days during which time they faced some civil unrest, looting and clashes with the security forces still loyal to Ben Ali, before handing power to an interim government who have administrated the country ever since. Um, the Tunisian General Labour Union supported the revolution and has been able to make some headway with the interim government uh, in some reforms. And uh, a minor role was played by our comrades in the Tunisian Workers' Communist Party, who, it should be noted, have hopes at its leanings. Um, a few other minor Marxist groups are said to have taken part, although because their efforts were mostly directed through individuals' work in the country's trade union movement, their influence is extremely small compared to the large parties such as the moderate Islamist Al Nada, or An Nada, um, the Secular Liberal Progressive Democratic Party, and the Social Democratic Democratic Forum for Labour and Liberties. Um, the election seemed to have taken place peacefully. However, uh, some violent protests did uh, break out in Sidi Bouzid, which is actually where the popular protests first broke out after the supporters of the Popular List Party clashed with state police forces in a protest of the party being disqualified from the election in one locality due to financial irregularities, thus losing a seat to the uh, Islamist and Nada party. Um, <coughs> thus uh, costing the party one seat in the assembly, uh, which brought their total down to about 19, I think. I would like to uh, congratulate our comrades in the Tunisian Workers' Communist Party for winning three seats in the assembly in Safakis, Kairouan, and Siliana. Uh, the party likely lost many votes to the many social democratic and left parties also running in the elections, but they still won over 7,000 votes, which is a good base of support with which to build a movement for workers' power in the country along with the existing trade unions and social democratic parties. My guess is that the party may in future seek to ally with the various left parties into a coalition who will fight for secular values and worker-friendly policies. But I hope the party retains an independent and revolutionary commitment to the struggle for socialism and will not become absorbed into the establishment. I congratulate our two Tunisian comrades on their efforts so far, and while this is a very humble beginning um, for the new phase of struggle, um, it is most certainly a step forward and not backwards in the long march for socialism in the Arab world. Uh, many Tunisians feel that the secular values of their society may be under serious threat from the An Nada party, who take inspiration from the current ruling Turkish government, though rumours persist that the party may be more hardline than their public image suggests. They also won the highest number of seats, 90 out of 217, hence uh, why I believe an alliance between parties um, on the left and on the kind of secular side of the spectrum is likely to take place. So you'll probably have the Islamists on the one side, the centre-right secularists and the centre-left secularists in three separate blocks. That's what I think will probably happen. Um, I'm sure we'll all be watching the country carefully as the uh, Constituent Assembly works to build up um, to a future general election. But let us remember, however, that 224 people died in the course of the revolution of the small nation, and uh, let's hope they did not lose their lives in vain.
Now, while democracy slowly blooms in Tunisia, it seems that the National Transitional Council of Libya uh, feels fit to act without it. While the world still pours over the increasingly grisly details of the former leader Muammar al-Gaddafi's death, the NTC continues to run with open arms towards the forces of reaction. After already auctioning off uh, Libya's oil to the west uh, without any consent or participation of the Libyan population, um, Jalil's government has decided that Sharia law will be the main source of legislation in the country, and any existing law which contradicts their interpretation of the Sharia will be scrapped, including the Progressive Family Law of 1984, which banned polygamy and protected women's rights. Again, without the participation or the consent of the people of Libya. Um, so these moves can be considered undemocratic. Um, the rights of women have been consistently rolled back in the rebel-controlled areas, especially away from the larger urban centres. And I believe this move is an uh, this is a move to appease the Islamist sections of the national militia <coughs> and to maintain Jalil's authority in the face of growing criticism. The division of the Arab world into fractured bourgeois states can only lead to such an uneven development in the Arab Revolution, especially when imperialism decides to get involved, which ironically always seems to lead to more Islamist governments wherever they attack the Middle East. Well, naturally, um, as the Latin American dictatorships backed by the US uh, leaned on the Catholic Church as a framework for social control under the guise of morality, so did, so do, uh, sorry, so too do the Middle Eastern client states lean on Islam. After all, a secular and progressive society is of little use to the great powers who seek to plunder their wealth, whereas a people divided by sectarianism and backwardness of uh, modern Islamist politics have little to offer in the way of resistance to, to imperialism beyond the odd carbon, being far more concerned with the various Sunni and Shia militias attempting to exterminate everything that does not conform to their reactionary vision of society. For the time being, extremist Islamism is in a minority in Libya, but so it was in Iran and Iraq and Afghanistan at various points in history before becoming to dominate those countries. However, it appears that the, the Jalil clique is perfectly happy to appease them up until the point where they conflict with bourgeois and, more importantly, imperialist interests, and we shall continue to watch this with a morbid fascination. Red salutes, comrades.